Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado, registered pharmacist number 12275. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and often deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be. But you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension, obesity and skin diseases, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure, because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin care, skin health, hyperpigmentation, if you want to contribute to the conversation, if you just have a success story you'd like to share, we want to hear from you. We welcome your calls, 844-236-6010. Try to call in early so we can get to as many calls as possible. 844-236-6010. If our lines fill up, we'll take your calls here in our next segment. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, you can head over to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com, my blogs, which we update regularly with posts and news stories, pharmacistben.com, brightsideben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can also go to benfuchsarchives.com. All our Brightside programs are archived on brightsideben.com as well as benfuchsarchives.com. If you want to purchase any of the truth treatment products that you hear us uh, talk about on the program, retinol 5% gel or any of the vitamin C, topical vitamin C products, you can go to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And we are talking skin. We're talking skin lightning. We're talking melasma, dark patches of skin or spots on the skin. And even though we're talking about the skin, we're talking about a skin, uh, a seemingly skincare issue. What we're really talking about is an internal condition. When your skin pigments inappropriately, rest assured you're dealing with some kind of internal condition. This is why it's so tough to treat skin pigment on a permanent basis. You can address skin pigment topically temporarily. You can get rid of skin pigment that's there, but pigmentation that is occurring is not going to be, you're not going to be able to address it simply with topical means, the pigmentation as it's occurring. The trick to dealing with hyperpigmentation as is the trick to dealing with all skin health issues, whether we're talking eczema, psoriasis, acne, dry skin, vitiligo, whatever, hyperpigmentation. The trick to addressing all of these issues is to understand the relationship between what shows up on the skin and what is occurring inside the body. As far as pigment goes, for some reason, throughout history, throughout the history of cosmetics anyway, and it's a long history, women have been obsessed with having beautiful white skin. Problem is, if the body wants to pigment the skin, it's going to pigment the skin. And that means if you're really going to, if you're going to do something about your skin pigmentation problems without addressing your health conditions, so the underlying health conditions, you've got to go into what's called cytotoxicity or cell death, killing cells. Because pigmentation of the skin is so important to the body, it's such a fundamental part of the stress response, the only way to override that system, to override that stress response is to kill cells. Throughout history, women have used all kinds of stuff, including toxic minerals like mercury to lighten their skin. Mercury basically kills pigment cells. Voila, your skin is light. Lead is the same thing. As early as the Renaissance period in uh, the 15th century, women were using lead to heal their skin. Using lead, using mercury, ultimately will clear the pigment on the skin, but in a a cytotoxic killing fashion. One of the early killing skin lighteners, cell killing skin lighteners, was called Spirits of Saturn or Venetia Ceruse. This was a type of paint additive that was used by artists to 
uh, to create a, a whitening effect on the canvas, but it also has a very effective skin whitening effect. Of course, the problem with Venus Cerus, or spirits of Saturn, is it's a type of lead. Lead acetate, which is made by mixing lead in with vinegar, and while it was great for paintings, and it was, gave the skin an artificially white tone, it was seriously awful stuff. And when it was put into skin creams in the form of acetate, in the form of lead acetate, it very readily entered into the circulation. Through the skin, it entered into the blood, resulted in lead poisoning. This caused hair loss, muscle paralysis, mental health issues, including dementias. Ceruse, venous ceruse, or lead, is also toxic to the skin. It would create uh, ulcerations in the surface of the skin, so women had to use more lead to cover their, the, bl the blisters and the ulceration that was caused by the, by the lead in the first place. And ultimately, it's thought that the application of this Venus ceruse or spirits of Saturn or lead acetate, by the way, Saturn's mineral is lead, hence the name spirits of Saturn. The mineral that's associated with the planet Saturn is lead. Just like gold is associated with the sun, lead was associated with Saturn. Anyway, spirits of Saturn and lead and Venus ceruse, all of these caused big, big, big problems and a lot of women died to have their skin white, including, by the way, Queen Elizabeth I, whose face was scarred by smallpox at an early age, if you've ever seen a picture of Elizabeth, considered one of the, the more effective of the British rulers, you can't help but notice that she had this incredibly, incredibly white skin. While that whiteness was not natural, it was a result of uh, the application of very thick layers of Ven uh, Venetian ceruse, or Venus ceruse, depending on who you ask. Ultimately, historians believe that Elizabeth's deteriorating, deteriorating mental state, she kind of went crazy towards the end of her life, and ultimately they believe that her demise was at least partially related to her use of this Venetian ceruse, this skin whitener. As it turns out, a lot of women, uh, other women too, from the Renaissance period on, especially wealthy women who could afford this stuff, suffered the, the, uh, the uh, problems associated with lead poisoning just to keep their skin light. Skin lightening is very big in Asia. There's an ancient Chinese, Chinese proverb that says, one white covers up three uglies. Asian women, like all women, were obsessed with keeping their skin white, keeping their skin light. And a lot of the, these days, a lot of skin lightening technologies actually come from Japan and Korea and China. Asian skin is especially prone to pigmentation issues, and there's a very interesting reason for that. And it has to do with the real causes of skin pigmentation. It's not the sun that causes hyperpigmentation. People say, well, stay out of the sun if you've got these sunspots. They call them sunspots. It's not the sun that is the cause of hyperpigmentation. Otherwise, everybody who went out in the sun would be hyperpigmenting. That's not the case. What's really the cause of hyperpigmentation is stress and stress hormones. Stress chemistry, stress hormones. I'm not just talking about emotional stress and psychological stress. I'm talking about digestive stress. I'm talking about sugar stress. I'm talking about hormone stress, especially estrogen and especially cortisol. Asians are particularly high estrogen producers, and thus the importance or the relevance to skin lightening. Asian skin is prone towards pigmentation issues because of the excess amounts of estrogen, not excess, but the high amounts of estrogen that Asians produce. These days, skin lightening strategies are just same old, same old. There's nothing new under the sun, no pun intended. And skin lightening strategies today are the same as skin, skin lightening strategies uh, in, in the Renaissance killing cells, killing pigment cells. Pigmentation is a fundamental part of chemistry. Hyperpigmentation is when that fundamental chemistry goes awry. But the fact that pigmentation, whether it's hyperpigmentation, too much pigmentation, or normal pigmentation is a fundamental part of biochemistry means it doesn't lend itself to control. You can't really control pigmentation. If the skin wants to pigment or the body wants to pigment the skin, it's going to happen. This is why the only way to effectively lighten the skin artificially, exogenously, from the outside, using a, a cosmetic topical product, is to poison the skin. Whether you're poisoning the skin in a mild sense, using mild skin liners, or you're poisoning the skin in a, in a serious sense, using hydroquinone or v Venetian ceruse or lead or mercury, if you're going to pigment the skin or uh, uh, affect the pigmentation of the skin artificially, you're going to have to use some pretty severe chemistry, and that is not a good idea. On the other hand, there's lots of wonderful non-toxic strategies that you can use. Hi, I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls here momentarily, so hang tight on the line. 
if we've left you on hold in the past, please tell our call screener and we'll get you to f uh, first, first in line. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're interested in any of our truth treatment products, including our retinol 5% gel, awesome for hyperpigmentation, or for anti-wrinkles, or for blemishes, or for just uh, as a general anti-aging, anti-aging conditioning product, our retinol 5% is also made with a big old dose of fat-soluble, stabilized, premium vitamin C. You can find out, all the, find out about all the truth products, Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you want to purchase any of the Longevity products or join the Brightside Ben team, love to have you on the team. Please call the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. All right, so talking about skin lightening, hyperpigmentation, if you've got spots showing up, you got an internal condition. It is not the sun's fault. Don't blame the sun. Blame some kind of burden on the inside of the body, whether it's a psychological, emotional, mental, str uh, mental stressor, or blood sugar changes, or digestive changes, or some kind of immune system problem. These are all conditions that will up cortisol levels, up estrogen levels. Stress hormones like cortisol and estrogen are associated with pigmentation issues. Article from uh, Medscape today. High saliva cortisol may flag cognitive trouble. Measuring cortisol levels in older folks is now being recommended, uh, especially for folks who are dealing with issues with Alzheimer's disease or cognitive impairment. That's because stress hormones affect the brain. Stress hormones are associated with lower total brain volume. High cortisol levels, high stress is associated with poor cognitive function. Lowering cortisol levels by relaxing the body is so important for every single system. And it's not a doctor issue. It's not a medical issue. It's a powerful strategy that we can all use ourselves or we can all apply or exploit or leverage ourselves. If your skin is pigmenting inappropriately, you almost guaranteed have an issue with elevations in cortisol and elevations in estrogen that are associated with some kind of stress. Pigmentation is a fundamental, basic part of the stress response. Your dermatologist probably does not know this. Your skincare professional, likewise, probably does not know this. But now you do, which means if you're hyperpigmenting, in addition to some topical strategies that we're going to talk about here momentarily, you have an internal condition that is manifesting itself as a sign or as a, as a, uh, as a result of an elevated stress response. Now, from a topical, we're, we're going to talk about some wonderful nutritional supplements that you could use. One of the best is, is pantothenic acid, vitamin B5, which we have not talked about anywhere nearly enough. It's super duper important for helping strengthen or stabilize the stress response. Vitamin B5 is important for the adrenal glands. It's important for all the skin issues that are associated with stress. Vitamin B5 is majorly important for how the body processes fats and fatty hormones. Older women are especially prone to problems with fat synthesis, uh, fat metabolism, fat processing. Vitamin B5 is important for menopausal patients, for hyperpigmenting patients, for oily skin and acne patients, for patients dealing with excess burden or excess stress. And you're not going to find vitamin B5 in high concentrations in a lot of supplements. You're not going to find vitamin B5 in a uh, even though it's found throughout the natural world, all foods have a little bit, or most foods have a little bit of vitamin B5. You're not going to find the good doses that you need. You need grams of the stuff. If you're dealing with oily skin or acne, or if you're dealing with pigmentation, we're going to cover vitamin B5 internally, and we're going to cover vitamin C internally, and we're going to cover vitamin A and zinc internally, all as it regards hyperpigmentation. But from a topical perspective, there is stuff you can do. Even though the skin wants to pigment, and even though the only drug strategies involve poisoning the skin, there are some great nutritional and great non-toxic strategies you can use to lighten the skin. If you've uh, studied skin lightening or if you've had hyperpigmentation and you've kind of done your research and you want to know how to address it, you've probably run into the word tyrosinase. Tyrosinase is an enzyme that helps break down the amino acid tyrosine. Tyrosine is a super duper important amino acid that helps give you energy. It's important for folks who have thyroid problems. Tyrosine is like a cup of coffee, a natural cup of coffee. Don't do too much because you'll get a little jittery, but if you do 100 or 200 milligrams of tyrosine, T-Y-R-O-S-I-N, 
N-E, 100 or 200 milligrams of tyrosine in the morning, you're not going to need your coffee. If you do too much, you're going to get really jittery, so you don't want to do too much, but 100 to 200 milligrams in the morning is a great way to, a great little natural pick-me-up. Well, it turns out that the body actually processes tyrosine with an enzyme called tyrosine enzyme or tyrosinase, and that tyrosinase or tyrosine enzyme turns tyrosine into pigment. Yes, tyrosine, that same pick-me-up amino acid is a, a root or precursor or raw material for making pigment. Pigment comes, partially at least, from tyrosine. Tyrosinase is the enzyme that turns tyrosine into pigment, and if you've studied your, your skin lightning or done research on skin lightning, you probably come across the phrase tyrosinase inhibitors. These are substances, and they're found everywhere in nature, that inhibit or suppress the activity of the enzyme that turns tyrosine into pigment. So tyrosinase inhibitors are the main strategy or one of the most important strategies for lightening the skin. And these tyrosinase inhibitors are found everywhere. Now, certainly, there are drugs that are tyrosinase inhibitors, hydroquinone. The classic gold standard medical treatment for pigmentation is a tyrosinase inhibitor. But there are natural, non-toxic tyrosinase inhibitors also. Arbutin, A-R-B. U-T-I-N, is the pretty much go-to tyrosinase inhibitor when it comes to the natural world, when it comes to the non-pharmaceutical world, when it comes to the over-the-counter world, and you've probably seen Arbutin, A-R-B-U-T-I-N, in your skin lightening product if you've done some research and you're looking for the so-called gold standard of non-hydroquinone lighteners. Actually, Arbutin is a type of hydroquinone, although it's much milder and much less effective and much less toxic. It's gentle and it's available over the counter. To get the most bang for your buck, if you're using Arbutin, you want to use it with another skin lightener that is really, really, really effective, probably even more effective than Arbutin, and that is vitamin C. Vitamin C is a stupendously valuable skin care, skin health ingredient. And if you are using a skin health or skin care product that does not feature stabilized vitamin C, in its fatty form, you are truly missing the boat on skin health. And I'm talking about every single marker of skin health. I'm talking about moisturization. I'm talking about anti-wrinkle. I'm talking about fighting acne. I'm talking about skin lightening. Pretty much everything you want in a skincare product, everything you want in a skin health ingredient is av available through vitamin C, but not just any vitamin C. You can't use the cheapo stuff. The cheapo stuff is ascorbic acid. Now, the cheapo stuff, ascorbic acid, is good internally, but from a topical perspective, if you want to get your vitamin C benefits, you've got to use the fatty vitamin C. And the benefits are tremendous, and they don't take very long for you to notice. When you start using a high-quality, high-concentration, premium, fat-soluble vitamin C, like ascorbyl palmitate or ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, you notice results within days. And that's how you know if a skin ingredient or skin product is effective, is if you notice results quickly, because the skin is growing quickly, the skin is moving quickly, the cells are, of the skin are dividing quickly, so you should have results likewise quickly. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're coming back with your phone calls right after this. Don't go away. Nah. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I am pharmacist Ben talking skin lightening, not just as it involves skin itself, but as it involves the internal milieu, the internal condition of the body. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation issues, you more than likely are dealing with stress hormone cortisol issues, female hormone slash stress hormone estrogen issues, adrenal health issues, digestive issues, and blood sugar issues. Nobody, nobody, nobody just has hyperpigmentation. This is so important when it comes to the health of the body. Nobody just has one health condition. We may notice it in one part of the body, but the body breaks down as a system. It's a field. It's a system in the sense that all the parts are connected. I got, a, I got a call or a letter a few months ago from a gal whose husband had polycystic kidney disease, and I gave her a whole program. I told her, she says to me, and I hear this all the time, oh, he's perfectly healthy, but he has polycystic kidney disease. Everything else is fine. And, and we think this. We think everything else is fine, but we just have polycystic kidney disease. Folks, that's impossible. It doesn't occur that way. 
and this poor misguided woman who's trying to take care of her husband, who's deluded into believing her husband's perfectly healthy, but he just has polycystic kidney disease, is now forced to go to the doctor and to deal with the medical model so that she can have the kidney addressed. I hear this all the time. I got Parkinson's disease, but otherwise I'm perfectly healthy. You can't be perfectly healthy if you have these kinds of conditions. And this is not to say that I'm not trying to beat anybody up. I'm just saying if we want to address the condition of our brain, if we have Parkinson's disease or the condition of our kidneys, if we have polycystic kidney disease or the condition of our skin, if we're hyperpigmenting, we've got to address the field, the system, the entire body, which is one unit, which means if you got a kidney problem, you got a body problem. If you got a brain problem, you got a body problem. If you got a skin problem, you got a body problem, and you have to address the body and then the skin will resolve itself, the kidney will resolve itself, and the brain will resolve itself. This is so fundamental. And it's such good news because it liberates us, it emancipates us from a reductionist model that thinks that all the parts of our body are somehow separated. They're not. They're connected by a, a, an invisible underlying field. And by addressing that in invisible underlying field with just basic, basic, simple lifestyle strategies, changing the way we eat, changing the way we supplement, changing the way we breathe, restricting the amount of sugar that we eat, relaxing the body. All of these simple, basic lifestyle strategies that have nothing to do with the medical model, once we start to incorporate these, not only will we be liberated from the medical model, not only will we be emancipated from Obamacare and from our prescription drugs and from strategies, medical strategies that butcher us and ablate us and destroy us and poison us, but we will truly, really get better the divine way the divinely mandated way. Because at the end of the day, folks, the body is a healing and regenerating system. Let us show you how simple and easy this can be. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Welcome, Michael from Washington. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, thanks for taking my call again. I called yesterday. I want to get really to the point here so I don't hog the whole show. Uh, for the last five weeks, I've had severe pain in my hip, minor pain in my back. I couldn't get in to see my doctor, so I went to a chiropractor for the first time. They sent out for images on my condition, and then they brought me back and said I had degenerative arthritic spine disease. And then they showed me that I had severe disc um, osteoporosis, spurs, the whole nine yards. So, uh, How old are you, I Michael? I'm 65. Okay, yeah, I remember talking to you yesterday. Here's the deal, Michael. You don't necessarily, yeah, your spine is degenerating and you got the osteoporosis. You know, I'm not going to, I don't want to address that. What I want to tell you is, from a healing perspective, you only need to know one thing. You don't need a chiropractor. You don't need a, a doctor for any of this stuff. You only need to know one thing. You ready for this, Michael? Your yeah. body is falling apart. You're melting. You're dissolving. And all you got to do is figure out why this is occurring because this isn't the way the body, this isn't the way the body operates. The body's a regenerating system and you are degenerating. So something is interfering. You follow me? I want you to see how I'm working, how we're working here logically, yeah. not just for you, but for all the listeners. Your body's a regenerating, regenerating system, but you're degenerating. So something is interfering. And there's only two ways this interference can develop. Either something is getting into the system that shouldn't be, or something is not getting into the system that should be. You follow me? The yeah. wrong stuff's getting in, and the right stuff is not getting in. So let's address this from both angles. First of all, how does the wrong stuff get in? Well, if you were injecting heroin into your blood, or you were taking, you're, you're using vaccines, or somehow bypassing your skin barrier and getting right into the blood, then that could be a problem. But you don't sound like you're doing that. So there's only one other way. And that, it, well, there's, you could be breathing it in too, but that's minor. For the most part, things get into the blood, the wrong things get into the blood through foods and digestion. So, and I'm going to tell you how you do that in a second, but I want that to make sense to you. The wrong stuff gets in through the digestive, uh, through the digestive system, through the intestine. So far, so good? Yes. Okay, this is for everybody listening now, not just for Michael. If you are degenerating, but we know the body's a regenerating system, the wrong stuff is getting in and the right stuff isn't. 
part one, the wrong stuff getting in, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's it's coming in through the intestinal barrier, through the digestive system. That means food and digestion, period. The second phase, or the second compartment, or the second aspect, if you will, the second category is the wrong stuff, the right stuff is not getting in, and that's your mighty 90 essential nutrients. So between eliminating the wrong stuff getting in and putting the right stuff in, this thing can begin to reverse. It has nothing to do with a chiropractor or a doctor. So step number one, you want to do a food diary and start to notice when you have digestive symptomology. When the wrong foods, when you're eating the wrong foods and stuff is getting into the blood and that shouldn't be getting in, you'll feel it. You'll either be constipated, you'll have diarrhea, you'll have loose stools, you'll, you'll feel bloated, you'll feel crampy, something. You follow me, Michael? Yes. And the problem is symptomology tends to diminish. We don't notice it as much over the course of time. So if you're 65 and you've been, and I'm not saying this is true, but if it is, just in case it's true, if you've been eating the wrong thing for 60 years or 65 years, you're not going to notice it. When you're crampy or you're bloaty or you're constipated, it's just going to go under the radar. The brain kind of turns down the volume on things that occur over and over again, especially over the, courses of, over the course of years and decades. So you have to write it down. Write down everything you eat and then write down how you feel an hour, two hours, four hours, six hours, eight hours, 12 hours later. That's called a food diary. And it'll help if, you, if you're up for it, if you fast for two or three days, that will make you more sensitive to the results, to the, uh, to the uh, effects of certain foods. You'll notice it more. So you may be, uh, just for hypothetical, uh, for hypothetical sake, you eat bread, right? And you, you're crampy and bloaty, but because you've been doing it all your life, you don't notice that you're crampy and bloaty after you eat bread or cereal, for say. But if you fast for two days and then eat bread, all of a sudden that crampy or bloatiness is going to become much more exaggerated. You're going to notice it more. You follow what I'm saying? If you clear the decks and then reintroduce, it, you'll become more sensitized to the symptomology, the effects of certain foods. The next thing you want to do, so that's food eliminate, a, a, a food diary and then eliminate problem foods. Step number one. Step number two is you have to start to strengthen the digestive lining, the intestinal lining, and there's lots of ways to do it. Now I'm going to tell you some strategies and it's not even going to make sense to a lot of folks who haven't listened to this program before. You're going to say, well, Michael has a, a back problem. He's got a hip problem. He's got a bone problem. What would a probiotics have to do with that? Well, they have a lot to do with it because good bacteria help strengthen the integrity of the digestive lining, keeps problem, fo uh, problem uh, foods from getting into the blood, reduces inflammation, reduces the immune response, so now your body can start to heal itself. And that's just one example. So food diary, food elimination, get yourself on the Biolumin Nightly Essence, three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night. Don't go away, Michael. Got lots more to tell you. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. If you're on hold, hang on. We'll get to you when we come back from our break. Eight four. Back on the bright side, going to motivate here so we can get to as many calls as possible. Hang tight. Uh, Michael in Washington, listen, I'm going to go fast here, okay, buddy? I just wanted to get, understand the logic. Wrong stuff getting in, right stuff not getting in. In order to prevent the wrong stuff getting in, you patch up the digestive system, everything you can think of. Number one, probiotics and good bacteria. Food diary and eliminating problem foods. Are you with me, Michael? Is this starting to make sense yes. to you? Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. So you patch up the gut, uh, and you, you have to have had long-standing digestive problems, FYI, if you know them or, or don't know them, for you to be this degenerated at the young age of 65, and you are very young, a good 40, 40, 45 years left. All right, so uh, probiotics, good bacteria, uh, eliminate problem foods. Use the glucogel caps. Those will do a couple things for you. They're going to help you build joint tissue. Uh, for your uh, for the degenerative disease, and then also they'll help build connective tissue in the intestine to strengthen the intestine. Same with bone soup, which is chicken soup with the cartilage. Uh, uh, the cartilage itself is very rege uh, helps regenerate joints, but also is very strengthening for the digestive tract. Less food is also going to help you, so you don't put a burden on the digestive system. Make sure you're getting enough quality protein, especially whey protein, and always do your ultimate enzymes with your protein so you can enhance absorption, and then also do, uh, uh, do uh, some apple cider vinegar with your enzymes and with your protein. It will help you if you do your protein, your enzymes, and your apple cider vinegar after some resistance training. And it doesn't have to be anything intense. It could be something as simple as just lifting some dumbbells if you do them correctly. Or, uh, you know, you can go to the gym for 10 or 15 minutes a day, four days a week. And when you come home, do your protein, your digestive enzymes, and your apple cider vinegar. 
And then also, uh, if you want to throw one more thing in, you can get some creatine powder, which we've talked about in the past. Always do essential fatty acids with your protein and with your, uh, with your meals in general. Essential fatty acids are very, very important for helping build connective tissue. Bone and joint tissue is a type of connective tissue, and essential fatty acids are important. Make sure you're using your Mighty 90 essential nutrients. Last, but, uh, well, not last, a couple more things. Uh, make sure you're keeping your intake of sugar down, refined sugar, bread sugar, cereal sugar. Sugar, pasta sugar, fruit juice sugar, fruit sugar. Why? Because sugar is pro-inflammatory and will keep your body from regenerating. And then last, but most certainly not least, make sure you're relaxing, especially after your resistance training. Why? Because the body heals, it grows, it recovers when you are relaxed, not when you're working and not when you're stressed. So oxygenation can relax the body. Hot tubs and massages can relax the body. Yoga and meditation can relax relax the body, anything you can do to relax. So number one, you're going to work on the digestive system with a food diary and probiotics and cartilage products, bone soup, etc. Number two, you're going to ha take in your building nutrients, especially protein and essential fatty acids. Use resistance training. Make sure you're using your ultimate enzymes and apple cider vinegar with your protein and then relax the body with oxygenation, with massages, anything you could do to use um, uh, all the relaxation strategies that we talk about here on the program. There's a lot more to it, but that is a great place for you to start. And it's not just for Michael, it's for anybody out there who's dealing with a degenerative condition. Does that make sense, Michael? Yeah, so you take the enzymes and the vinegar before you eat them? With protein? it, it could, yeah, with, with it. it, with it, yeah. Okay. Okay? Thank you. Sure. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Good, good luck, you Michael. Oh, okay, buddy. All right, Ed in Idaho. What's going on, man? Um, okay. Hi, Ben. I'm a hey. regular listener and really appreciate your perspective on digestion. I believe you're right on the money. Good deal. My, my uh, questions for you are this. What to eat, raw versus cooked vegetables, how much fruit, recent negativity. Let's take those one at a time. Those are all good questions. Let's take them one at a time. Okay, so uh, raw versus cooked. Let's take that first. Raw is always better. However, with some foods, especially certain vegetables, you got to steam them a little bit to re release the nutrients. But I say a little bit. Raw is good as long as you, you can process some of the nutrients that are in veggies. You may have to steam them a little bit. What you don't want to do is overcook, and you don't want to have most of your meals coming out from cooked foods. And there's a, there's a very interesting relationship between health and enzymes. Most foods that we eat, processed foods, cooked foods, are, don't have enzymes. They're depleted. And enzymes are unbelievable important. What we call vitamins are really, or at least the main ones, the two main ones, C and, and the B complex, are coenzymes. They're not enzymes, they're, or they're, not, uh, uh, they're not only vitamins, they're coenzymes. They help the enzymes work. But without the enzymes, the coenzymes don't have any effect. And most of us are enzyme depleted. Why? Because we're eating processed foods. We're eating cooked foods. So raw is always the way to go, uh, but you may need to steam slightly. And there are certain foods that you can't eat raw. Uh, because of um, because of toxicity and because of bacteria, so you got to be careful. But as like much broccoli? as you can do uh, broccoli, you might have to steam a little bit because that's so dense and there's so much fiber in there. Some of those nutrients are locked up, so you may want to steam that a little bit. Uh, the cruciferous vegetables in general. Uh, so, so between raw and slightly steaming, that's where you want 80 to 90 percent of your foods, in my opinion. Um, cooked foods keep them down to a minimum, basically because of that whole enzyme. Not to mention the fact that vitamins are, are heat heat unstable to heat also. Does that answer your question? A little bit, a little bit cooked, but mostly raw or slightly steamed. Yes. How about quinoa? What's the deal with that? Quinoa, quinoa yeah. with an N. Quinoa. Quinoa. Q U. Quinoa. Yes. Quinoa is an awesome, awesome grain. High protein. Uh, it does have sugar in there, so you don't want to go crazy with it. But as far as grains go, it's one of the best. You do need to cook that one a little bit. Um, and you are going to lose some of the enzyme value and the vitamin value, but uh, it, as far as grains go, it's one of the best. Quinoa, you're saying, saying Q-U-I-N. Uh, uh, inflammatory. What's we'll say again? Uh, I read recent reviews on it saying it's inflammatory. It is inflammatory. All grain. Yes, all grains are going to have a certain uh, inflammatory effect because they're sugar, and sugar is very inflammatory. So that's why I'm not a big believer in grains. However, as far as grains go, uh, quinoa is one of the best. Okay. My issues are inflammation as it relates to arthritis, heartburn, bloating, gas, and more recently, piles. 
those are all all connected to foods. And I was just talking to uh, to Michael in, in Washington. Everything I told him is going to apply to you as well. Number one, do a food diary and try to get data. You need to isolate the problem foods. We need data, information, sample points. So you got to take notes, and that's what a food diary is. It's basically taking notes on everything you eat and how your body responds to that. And then once you get the information, eliminating the problem foods. Uh, and then all the digestive support stuff. Digestive enzymes play a dual role in uh, taking care of in, uh, the inflammatory process. Number one, they help you process your food. They help you digest your food. And that's important for, and that has anti-inflammatory effects. When, when, uh, when food is not processed correctly, especially proteins, the little chunks of protein, they're called peptides, will leak into the blood and the inflammatory response ensues. So by using digestive enzymes, you can prevent that from occurring by helping the body break down those foods those protein foods completely so that instead of chunks of protein getting into the blood, small amino acids get into the blood and that's what's supposed to happen. Secondly, digestive enzymes can actually on their own break up inflammatory, uh, inflammatory clogs, if you will, in the joints and in the blood. So taken on an empty stomach, digestive enzymes have anti-inflammatory effects. Taken with food, they have digestive effects which have anti-inflammatory effects. So both, you can take them with food and you can take them on an empty stomach and get um, anti-inflammatory benefits. Also the probiotics, the biolumin nightly essence three in the morning, three at night. The Fucoid Z, I forgot to mention that. That also has some wonderful uh, digestive health benefits. It helps strengthen the digestive lining. Likewise, with the glucogel cap, strengthens the digestive lining and will also help you build uh, joint tissue. Don't forget your Mighty 90 Essential Nutrients, especially the Ultimate EFAs, which have anti-inflammatory effects. Uh, also, one last thing, if I, a couple last things. Vitamin E and vitamin C are tremendously anti-inflammatory anti-inflammatory. You need high doses of both though, 400 to 800, even up to 1200 IU of vitamin E. Look for the mixed tocopherol form and then also uh, uh, vitamin C in high doses. You'll get that in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. You want to do about 1,000 to 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, although you can do a lot more than that. Go ahead, Ed. Uh, anything else? Um, what about the piles? How do you treat that? Uh, fasting. Fe, uh, okay. Fasting and eliminating problem foods is the best way to treat uh, piles. Now you said that those showed up at the end, right? Or those showed up recently? Yeah. I'm sorry. Like, That's so right. you you were your digestive system was degenerating, uh, was degenerating for a while, right? Before that occurred. Yes, I've I've had this inflammation and uh, the arthritis and heartburn and all that, and I'm wondering if I have a leaky gut. Well, you absolutely have a leaky gut. Everybody has a leaky gut, but yours is more significant. When you have hemorrhoids or piles, that's a sign that the blood is not circulating correctly and the digestive system is, you're constipated, basically, and you're doing this pushing thing. So hemorrhoids and piles need to be regarded as a digestive condition and as a circulatory condition. Things are getting into the blood that shouldn't, and you're constipated. So eliminating problem foods is always the way to go for constipation. Constipation is like a, when the intestine freezes. It's like a deer in the headlights kind of effect, except it's in the... In in the intestines and then also it could mean that the circulation your blood circulation is starting to slow is starting to become sluggish things are clogging up it's basically a clogging effect hemorrhoids or piles and that is secondary or following all the digestive conditions that you were dealing with so that's why the food diary is so important to get some information on what to eliminate in addition to the digestive enzymes and the bioluminite essence and the fucoid z and apple cider vinegar and all the digestive strategies we talk about on the program we're just out of time i apologize uh, if you want to call back tomorrow we can talk about this a little bit but more completely and uh, apologize if I left you on hold as well. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. We'll be back at you tomorrow with more good health information. Take care. Have a wonderful, spectacular, beautiful day. Bye for now.